As instructional designers and learning and development consultants, we'll often be asked to recommend platforms and authoring tools for organizations and individuals. So when iSpring reached out offering to walk through some of the latest updates to their platform, I figured it was a great opportunity to update myself on what they're offering and then share that with you. Just so you know what you're watching, this, like our previous video with iSpring, is a showcase video, not a review. There is no recommendation for purchase during this video, and no money has exchanged hands at any point. All that we're doing is they're sending along Anna, one of their fantastic in-house instructional designers, to share what the platform is now capable of. More specifically, she's going to walk us through some of the fantastic new AI features that they've added onto the pages, and she's going to walk us through the portfolio feature, helping instructional designers and learning and development professionals build their professional portfolios, whether they're using iSpring only or other authoring tools as well. Without further ado, let's dive in. Hi, Anna. Thank you so much for, for joining us. Um, really exciting. We've got a couple of things to uh, to look at. Uh, I know first up, we're looking at some some AI features, the, uh, the the technology of the moment, which is very exciting. So it'd be great to see how uh, how iSpring are bringing that to uh, to authoring, and uh, also portfolio. Um, I think this is going to be especially interesting because I know a lot of the audience are in that space where they're considering going freelance or they're getting started in their world of ID more broadly, and creating a portfolio is kind of one of those always interesting topics. Uh, so it's really excited to see the tools you've got for that. Um, but without further ado, I shall uh, shut up and get out of the way and uh, <laughs> you can start walking us through the platform. First and foremost, let me introduce myself. So uh, my name is Anna Polly, and I'm a senior course developer at iSpring Solutions. I have nearly a decade of experience in e-learning and I love sharing all of the good stuff that iSpring offers uh, to our customers. So um, today I want to share my love as a tool and show you something we didn't show a lot before the cloud-based side of iSpring Suite, which is called iSpring Space. So um, iSpring Space is an online course builder and a sharing service, like um, a Google Drive, kind of it, where you can publish your courses and share them with your colleagues, let's say for a review or even been with your employees. So they will be able to take courses there. So we have a lot of new features on this part, and I think, I hope it will be interesting, so let's dive in. So iSpring Space has a long grid builder with a built-in AI assistant. And that's really great in terms of speeding up your work. So imagine you don't have to log into third-party services right now. You can just use ChatGPT technology right in the product where you're creating your courses. So for me, it just sounds great. No more many, many tabs in your browser. So let me open iSpring Space and show you how you can use it. So I will use the iSpring suite from my computer. I will go to pages and go ahead and create a new one. So um, the development process takes place right in your browser. So you don't require to install, um, to install any programs. If you have a link, you can just follow it, log in and start creating your long reads. So today we will create a long grid about fire safety. But first, I will show you how AI can help you create some content from your long reads and articles. So I don't know about you, but sometimes I really struggle to start a new course from the beginning. So like there's a blank page and me, <laughs> and I just don't know where to start. But now there are no more staring at a blank screen. So struggling to find the right words. Now I can use AI to do this for me. And let's go ahead and I will show you how it works. So first 
we need to choose a title for our future course. And for sure, let's go ahead and ask AI about possible titles. To run AI, there are three possible, possible ways on how you can do this in iSpring. So I will put my cursor right here. I can click on plus and go to ask AI. If I already have some text, I can just select it and there will be option to run AI, something like hello. I will select the text and here I can see AI in the menu. Or I can just hit the space bar on my keyboard and the AI line will appear. So I will use this one the last way. And our request for today will be suggest some titles for fire safety in the workplace course. So we just enable, we just put our request and hit press enter on your keyboard. And here we go. Like some interesting titles that cover different topics will appear. So if you don't like any of these options, you can just click try again and AI will generate other titles. So there are plenty of them to choose from. So when you're satisfied with the result, when you love the titles, you can click add to paste it directly to your long read. So let's choose the one from the list which we have right now. Let's go with this one. This will be our title. Okay, I will insert it right here. Delete this information so we will not get lost. Now we need to create an outline. And to do this, I will add the title here too. I will select my title. I will go to AI. And I will select the very last but not least option, create course outline. So here we have some topics and subtopics. <laughs> Looks for me like a kind of quite relevant course content. But AI is something that should be double checked, right? So if you have any concerns about this, you're more than welcome to review it with an expert for something where we just need to start. I think it's it's just awesome to go. But what if we need some additional things to be covered in outline? For example, learning objectives, assessments, that's definitely no problem because we can just ask AI to add them to our outline. For example, I will use um, the following prompt. So I will add my outline right here, the first version of it. Click spacebar on my keyboard and add our prompt, like write an assessment to be completed one week after the first lesson of the course. Our title is here. And to help the learner to understand the actions they need to take in case of fire in the workplace. Let's go ahead and run this prompt to see what we'll get. As we all can see, AI created an assessment. So here we can see questions which my learners will need to answer. Let's stop on question number four. <laughs> I think it will be enough. And let's go ahead and add it to our long create. AI created an assignment, but if you want to make it more interactive, you can create a quiz. So AI assistant can help you with quiz questions not only with titles and outlines. So now you don't need to think of some tricky questions. You can create them with AI. So if you already have the text of your lesson and you want to create a quiz on this text, so you can just copy and paste this text to the page. I will just select it, go to AI in the menu, select the option create quiz questions the ai assistant immediately offers you some options you may not find all the questions and answer choices perfect that's fine <laughs> but you can definitely edit them after that let's go ahead and insert it 
And when we're speaking about the text in courses, there's another important feature to simplify language. It's of particular importance when it comes to courses because our task as instructional designers is to convey the topic as clearly as possible for each student. Let me show you how it will work. So I have an example text from my pre-made magic file. I will select it, go to AI, and I will select simplify language. If you don't like the results, you can try again and you can replace your current text or just add it below. Here we have um, the algorithm reduced some abbreviations and rephrased some of the sentences. So now it's really easier to comprehend the text. I also have good news for everyone who's working with different languages. Our AI speaks a lot of them. So, for example, let's ask about how to extinguish a fire in Spanish. And again, I don't speak Spanish so good, <laughs> but it looks like a step-by-step -step guide on how to deal with a fire. AI is just a part of features which Ice Print Space offers. Um, it has a big range of small but important features that help you to create really engaging and professional looking online courses in a matter of hours. An instructional design portfolio is an important tool that allows instructional designers to demonstrate their skills and helps them build their professional practice. So if you want to do more freelance work, if you're looking for a job or you want to submit your work for awards, you will need an eye-catching online presence with samples of your work. And iSpring Space can help you with that. So now you don't need to have any additional tools you can do it everything in iSpring. So let me show you how your portfolio can look like if you if you will do it in iSpring. This is my like little mini portfolio. So here you can see my work experience, about me, skills, and see the courses. Now let's go ahead and create it from the scratch together. Let's say you have iSprint. What do you need to make sure that the portfolio is enabled in your account? So first of all, you need to go to settings right here on the left side and make sure that allow efforts to create portfolio option is enabled. Click save, click right here and go to my portfolio. So it's absolutely blank right now. So let's see how we can make it beautiful then you need to upload your content. So you can not only add courses which was created with iSprinter portfolio, but if you used another like third party offering tools, which allows you to publish your courses as a SCORM packages, you can upload your SCORM packages to iSpring space and add them to your portfolio then. Let's say we already have our courses uh, created and uploaded to iSpring Space. What are we going to do next? So first of all, I will add some information about myself. So I just click edit and quickly add the information. looking for work in a specific industry, I will recommend to only add information which is necessary and relevant for your industry. Now it's time to add a course to our portfolio and I think that we can go ahead and add our fire safety course. So I click where it says add project to portfolio and select our long grade. Add to portfolio. 
after that, I can upload a cover image. So I will go ahead and do this. Add a title and I will change its description. So this is sit time and there's a little like outline and click save. Let's go ahead and add just one more project. Let's go ahead and add a cover image. So I click where it says add cover image and select a picture from my computer. If necessary, you can replace it or delete it later. After you do this, you can just click where it says share and just send a link to your colleagues so they will be able to open your courses which you added to your portfolio, read a description and see all of your work which you added there. That's fantastic and I think that set of tools together um, offers a, a really nice way for both experienced and newer people to the world of instructional design to build up you know, work examples, quickly develop content. Uh, and then get it out there for people to see so they can start getting feedback and iterate on it and uh, and kind of be showing what they're up to, which is fantastic. I think that when you just start into work in instructional designer, as an instructional designer, that's pretty hard to um, dive into so many tools because there's like a lot of them. And we're not even talking about some AI tools because there right now you can find AI for everything, like for pictures, music, videos, everything. And when you just want to get started with this, then you just want to give it a try and see if it will work for you or you will prefer something else after. I think that will be a very good start. You don't need to think here on how to, how to set up the message because people can send you a message right here directly and you can add all the information right here on this one page and just send the link. Also, um, I love the idea of what when you have a portfolio, let's say you want to share some different samples, examples of your work, maybe in different industries, maybe you want to show uh, quizzes, um, I don't know, interactions, some videos and et cetera, and et cetera. And I love the idea that iSpring can allow you to do that just because if you have it published as form, which is like the most famous and popular format, you can upload it here. So if you even if you already had to try these other tools, you can still publish it here. Well, we will make sure there are links to iSpring and everything we've been talking about today in the description of this video. Please do go and check it out. As you can see, the tool is doing some really interesting things to help us be more efficient and get our work out there quicker. I hope you found this video useful. If so, please like and subscribe to the channel and get involved in the comments. If you're already using iSpring, drop a link to your portfolio, share some work or let us know how you're getting on with the tool. If iSpring's new to you in this video, let me know what you think. Either way, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.